This coming Sunday is the second Sunday after Pentecost. After Pentecost until Advent is the season of ordinary time. This season is not ordinary as in humdrum or nothing special. Um, it is ordinary as in ordinal or counted. Um, so the weeks are counted as um, first Sunday after Pentecost, second Sunday after Pentecost, and so on. Um, they're also counted as proper three, four, five, six, and so on. It's a little bit confusing, but that's how they do it. So sometimes I guess I'll I'll refer to them maybe both ways as I'll do the second Sunday after Pentecost and then today is proper five um, is how it is. I, yeah, I don't I don't know why they don't line up, but they don't. Anyways, <laughs> because the timing of Easter and Pentecost is dependent on the cycle of the moon and not the Gregorian calendar proper doesn't line up with Pentecost. I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't match up. We're on proper five, but it's the second Sunday after Pentecost. Anyway, that has nothing to do with what we're contemplating today. The gospel text. <laughs> The gospel text that Dr. Gaffney chose for um, this week is Matthew 13, uh, verses 31 to 35. It's another short one. Um, but in this text, there are two very short parables or wise sayings or proverbs. Um, the Hebrew word um, is actually the same word for parable and proverb. Um, of Jesus. Um, parables are meant to be contemplated over and over and over again. Um, they're kind of like diamonds with different facets or onions or ogres with many, many layers. Um, you just peel back and there's another layer and another layer. And every time you read it, you, you can have another nugget of, oh, so this is what it means. Um, so Gaffney makes a couple of interesting notes in her book um, that about this text that I'd like to pass along to you all before we begin. Um, the first is that in this passage, um, this really short passage with two really quick um, parables, Jesus offers diverse and inclusive images of God. The first parable has a male character and the second has a female character. She points out that this also happens with the parables of the lost sheep and the lost coin, which are also back to back. And she says, were we to imitate Christ, we would not limit ourselves to just one image of God. So I thought that was important to note. And the second interesting thing that she notes is that the quotation from the prophet in verse 38 is not an exact quote. Um, so the verse says, this was to fill, fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will declare what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. So the first line of that quote is from Psalm 78, which is actually the psalm for this week as well. So we'll hear that later at the end of the contemplation. But the second line is not found in any of the texts that survive today. It's not in any of the Hebrew copies that have been found or the Greek Septuagint or the Syriac Pitschita or the Aramaic Targum. So it's not to say that Jesus or actually Matthew, when he wrote down this or whoever wrote down this um, text, misquoted the prophet of old. Um, they might have had access to other 
texts that we no longer had, or maybe they were following oral tradition or something, we don't know. Um, but I find it super fascinating to think about, like, what text did Jesus read? What did he have access to? What were these first century um, people uh, reading and how did they pass along uh, their knowledge of the of the sacred um, scriptures? What did the prophets say and how did they pass along their information? So I find that really fascinating to think about. But the last thing that I'll say before um, I read our text for today is that phrase, um, this was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet is a phrase that is repeated 14 times in the book of Matthew to introduce quotes. So our passage today is the 11th occurrence of this um, construction. Um, so I think it would be interesting to do a study sometime on these 14 um, th these 14 quotes that Matthew, Jesus, um, Matthew has Jesus take from the um, prophets of old and brings them into his his context to fulfill um, what the prophets had say. So I'm going to put file that away into the back of my brain for a rainy day project because I think that would be really fun. But anyways, so enough introduction. Um, let's go ahead and move into our passage for today. But before we do that, I will light my candle. And invite us to just pause for a moment to gather ourselves. Invite us to rest in God's presence as I pray for our graces. To know Jesus more intimately. To love him more intensely. And to follow him more closely. Matthew 13 31 to 35. Jesus laid out another parable before the crowd. The realm of the heavens is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in their field. Indeed, it is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Then Jesus told them another parable. The realm of the heavens is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three scoops of flour until all of it was leavened. All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Without a parable, he said nothing to them. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will declare what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Word of God, word of life. Before I guide you through the passage with questions and pauses, let's take just a moment to center ourselves. Breathing in God's spirit. and breathing out anything that distracts us from being here in the presence of God. 
ready to focus and enter into this text. Pray again for our graces to know Jesus more intimately, to love him more intensely, and to follow him more closely. I invite you to enter the story. Jesus laid out another parable before the crowd. Imagine yourself in the crowd of people gathered around Jesus, listening to him tell stories. What does this setting look like to you? Are you indoors or outside? Are you seated or standing? Who else is present in the crowd? What is the mood of the group? Are there lots of sounds and noises? Are people quiet and listening intently? What emotions are you feeling as you prepare to hear Jesus speak? The realm of the heavens is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in their field. Indeed, it is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Imagine a man sowing mustard seeds. What does that look like? How small is a mustard seed? Imagine holding one, just one seed in your hand. Roll it between your fingers. What does it feel like? Now imagine that small seed growing into a great plant, becoming a tree even. So large that birds come and sit on on its branches. And 
not only that, they build nests, make their homes in its branches. As you roll that small seed through your fingers, Take a moment to listen to the birds sing as they perch on the branches of this mustard bush that has become a tree. Notice a mama bird crafting a home for her babies. Perhaps you notice another bird bring back food for a baby bird. And maybe there's some other birds learning how to fly for the first time and leave their nests. How does it feel to witness this abundant growth that started as this tiny, tiny seed that you're holding between your fingers. In what ways is this scene like the realm of heaven to you? Then Jesus told them another parable. The realm of the heavens is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three scoops of flour until all of it was leavened. When Jesus shifts to the next parable, what do you notice about the people in the crowd? Has the mood changed? Are people engaged and interested in Jesus' teaching? Or do they seem confused? or perhaps bored, or maybe annoyed, or angry. As you listen to the second parable, what are you feeling? Imagine the woman as she takes the yeast and carefully mixes it into the flour. As she kneads the dough, what does it look like? What does it sound like?
What does it smell like? Can you pick up the scent of the yeast? Does she say anything as she kneads the dough? Perhaps she sings a song. And watch as she then allows the dough to rest. She steps away from her creation. And allows it to rest. How does it feel to watch the entire batch of dough leaven? Not just parts of it. Not just one little side of it, but the whole dough that was mixed together grows and leavens as one. What emotions arise within you as you reflect on this parable and what it might have to say to you about the realm of the heavens? All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Without a parable, he said nothing to them. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will declare what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. How do you feel about Jesus's decision to teach in parables? How do you feel about the things that have been hidden from the foundation of the world. Jesus's mission to reveal these things. I invite you to spend the next 10 minutes in a colloquy with the divine, 
speak to God about what you experienced during the contemplation. What might God want to say to you about your life or the life of your community as it relates to this text? When I sound my chimes, it will indicate that you have about a minute to wrap up your colloquy, after which time I will end the silence with the reading of this week's psalm. If you're doing this contemplation later with the recording, go ahead and hit pause now and come back when you're ready to hear the reading of the psalm. So I realized that the psalm that I will close the silence with is not the psalm that was referenced in this passage. That's next week's psalm. So we will have to wait till next week for Psalm 78. This one is Psalm 65, verses 5 to 13. Next week we will get Psalm 78. <clears throat> Through wondrous deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God, our salvation. Hope for all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. You establish the mountains through your might. You are girded with strength. The one who silences the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the rumble of the peoples. They who live at the farthest reaches are awed by your signs. You make the dawnings of morn morning and evening sing for joy. You attend the earth and water her. You enrich her greatly. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain. Thus you have established it, irrigating earth's furrows, smoothing her ridges, softening her with showers, and blessing her growth. You crown the year with your goodness. Your paths overflow with fatness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow with joy. The hills gird themselves. The meadows are clothed with flocks. The valleys arrayed in green. Indeed, they shout for joy. Amen.